So yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> I want to ask just in terms of other tools that you've used to support your mental well-being and that fortitude, because you mentioned, you've just mentioned, you know, setting alarms for yourself to make sure you go to bed on time. What are some of the other ways that, you know, you've implemented tools to help you continue to stay true to that transformation that you worked so hard for? Yeah. Well, one of the main, you know, ways that's been super documented, right? Uh, So I can source it later if we need to for folks, but I don't think anyone's going to be really shocked when I say journaling. (laughs) Mm, So um, it can be journaling in the form of old school pen and paper. It can be journaling in the form of dictation. In fact, that's part of what attracted me to the Evermore app. And again, and this is not um, a sales pitch, I'm just saying it is a voice journal. And I felt like it was a really great way for me to express myself quickly and privately in the moment. And so for paper journaling or any kind of voice memos or whatever tools work best for you, when you capture your stream of consciousness thoughts about any topic, whether they be a happy thing or sad thing or challenging thing or nervous thing or whatever they may be, they kind of get you to reflect and crystallize within yourself. What is my position on this? Do I really want to hold these beliefs? Do I need to shift them? And what do I need to get there? So it's kind of like if you think about anything in a, in a career setting or even in a parenting setting, if, if you don't work outside the home and something is quote unquote wrong or broken, first you have to recognize what is it about it that's not working? And then what is it that you can do, right? And some of that for me was also changing your identity narrative, right? You ask yourself, like, what are the top, one to three things I could do today to make some progress to this future self that I would maybe love a little more, be a little gentler with, respect a little more, be proud of, right? So any kind of those actions out of your comfort zone that I talked about before, Mm. those are the big ones because your comfort zone is a lot largely determined by that, by your current personality and your mindset. So you start to look at those boundaries that you've set for yourself I can't go and give a keynote and get my picture taken for a magazine because I, I don't do that. I'm awkward. I don't know how to pose. I, I look funny. I, I My eyes are two different sizes. Those are my issues. I don't like Oh, them. we've just been I'm having like, that conversation know, earlier on today. Hair and makeup or whatever yeah. those things are to be like, well, I'm here and they want to take my picture. So just smile and deal with it. And whatever it is, it is. It's not like you're a ghost. You know, you're going to exist. Who cares? And like whatever it is that you have to tell yourself to kind of push through. And maybe it's not going from, you know, zero to 60 on day one. Maybe it's a small thing like being in a family photograph instead of always offering to take the photograph. Right. right? So so they, they and that's private, not for social media, not for the world. Start with something small that isn't what you typically would do. So that's kind of another thing. And then the other area I was going to say tools for me, I, I'm, well, not a shock. I'm a nerd and I like to read. So <laughs> I do a lot of reading and you could do audiobooks too, or not books at all or workbooks. Um, and I look to um, sort of three core authors. I, I don't know if I need to name them or whatever, but I, I did look to, to some authors that, Quite frankly, someone gave me a book and said, I think this will help you. And I said, thank you. And I put it on the side of a table. And then someone gave me another book that I respect (laughs) and admire and who had, you know, done some transformative work themselves. And I said, thank you. And I put it on a book. I mean, I put it on a table and I said, I'll I'll get to that later. And for me, you know, COVID was one of the times and, and right before that, when sort of my health journey culminated in an emergency room visit, um, where when I started to feel a little bit better physically, I just decided to maybe crack open the spine on some of those books and they're household names, some of them, and some are not. And I just found myself so inspired and doing something that I rarely do because I think it's, um, blasphemy is I actually wrote in the book, which I never usually do All my books, look like they have not been touched and all my things are in the packaging. Cause that's another topic for another podcast. <laughs> so I wrote in the book and then I actually then thought about the things that were connecting with me and then reflected on them for myself. Like, how could I bring a connection to myself about this? And what could I do to make use of this new way of being, right? And so that's that journaling or the self-reflection time and something about seeing it in writing or hearing yourself, however you choose to record, kind of makes it real. And mm-hmm. then it makes you accountable and then ideally motivated to kind of keep going, right? Yeah. So so those things um, really helped. And then the other thing is I think other people, and those people can be people you know, 
like your family, if you have one, your friends, they could be professionals in terms of, you know, coaches, executive coaches, life coaches, they could be professionals, psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever, Mm -hmm. they could be support groups, they could be online forums, it really, and I say this with complete respect to the professional clinical industry. But what I mean is to get support, it doesn't have to be like structured and clinical in nature, it can just be cheerleading that is pure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I do need to know what those books were. I know. <laughs> that was going to be my question, too. You need well, to I'll, just, I'll tell books. you the three authors. Well, the so, top ones. The first one, no shock to anyone, is Deepak Chopra. Mm. And the second one is Dr. Well, he's a doctor, too. Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, and the book specifically was You Are the Placebo. And then the third one is actually not about what you may think, but for me, it was a transformative on the health side. And it's about mushrooms. And not necessarily um, psilocybin, psychedelic mushrooms. This is more about like everyday forest mushrooms with healing properties Mm -hmm. um, for immune suppression, that kind of thing. And his name is Paul Stamets. And he also has a program, Fantastic Fungi, that now I've told you and probably will mention again because everyone (laughs) I know is told about this. And my children are like, again, the mushroom show, mom. (laughs) I loved it. It's a great documentary. It's on Netflix. Oh, you like it, right? Yeah. So so Paul Stamets. So they're kind of that holy trinity. So the the, the, You Are the Placebo um, from Dr. Dispenza was incredible because I work in healthcare. And obviously, I know about placebos on the surface, right? A Mm -hmm. long time. But I started to really deconstruct the role of the mind and health and how can a placebo work in oncology in yeah. surgery? Like, wow. how is that possible? Like, so when I really deconstructed that on, with his understanding and then like, I kind of kept going into my own sources, it made me feel powerful. It made me feel in control of my future and not that I'm not going to pass because unfortunately, you know, that's still going to happen. But for the me that I am today and tomorrow, maybe I could make some choices and maybe I could tell myself I deserve and want to be as healthy as I can be and yeah. just try it. It doesn't hurt. So that, that was a lot. And then obviously Deepak, I don't have to talk about too much to just say incredible inspiration on so many levels, especially mm-hmm. on, for me, a bit of the understanding that stillness and meditation, I used to think I couldn't meditate because I'm clearly... Um, high energy person (laughs) and had tried and would be almost vibrating as I sat, right? (laughs) It's not working. It's not working. I'm not meditating yet. It's not working. The thoughts are still here. And I was fighting sort of the natural way my brain worked instead of Mm -hmm. accepting that my brain is going to be firing a lot and focusing on less about what those thoughts were, accepting them and letting them kind of pass and watch, wash over me. And then, you know, because a lot of what he talked about for me was these end benefits of meditative and other kinds of wellness. And I was already actually doing yoga, um, even as as a larger person, right? And and the correlation between that and overall health. So I wanted to connect better. And just like everything else for me, meditation took time. It took me weeks and months of doing it several times a day. And because I was trapped at home in COVID, I got well, basically better at it. And I finally hit that moment where I realized that I had lost sense of my body in Mm. the meditative state. And then I thought, oh, and it was only a a little brief moment, but I was like, oh, that's what they're talking about. (laughs) Okay. It is possible for spazzy people, you know, kind of thing. I had to like deconstruct that idea of who I was and what those um, modalities could be. And they can be for anyone. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that. 